All right, here we are. Nerd Rage Pioneer 5K Top 4. I assume everyone watching has been here since the beginning of the modern event yesterday, and we appreciate that. If not, if you if you showed up some in between at some point, well, you're slacking, but still, we appreciate you too. Hope you're enjoying the content. All right, we've got top four bracket. Let's go. Let's take a look. So we have Jesse Robkin, season two points leader on Mono White Humans, number one overall seed, facing Will Kowalczyk on Black Red Midrange. But the match we're going to watch, George Jabour, his second top eight of the weekend, didn't Ooh. make it past the quarterfinals yesterday. Played Blue Eye Control in both formats. This time advances to top four, playing as Matthew Ruck, who just watched defeat the Elves deck with Abs and Grease Fang. I think everybody's ready to get this going, so no reason to dawdle. Let's see if the players are ready. And yeah. get this and underway. So, okay. Cool. So they are, looks like they're both taking a mulligan. In addition to the points and the money, the winner of today's event earns a seat at the DreamHack Atlanta Regional Championship in November. So, lots on the line for some of these players. I know Jesse Rob Robkins already qualified, but I'm not sure the status of the rest of these players. We know Matthew Rock is not. We, we just asked him about it. Mm -hmm. As he drops his cards into his lap while shuffling for top four. Said he hasn't played a big tournament in five or six five years. Five years. And is in top four. It's the Pikachu shirt. I guess. Although, if that were the case, wouldn't you have more top fours in big events? Oh. Okay. Yeah, that was... <laughs> I actually... So I didn't start really collecting Pikachu stuff until the pandemic. And I haven't really played in a big tournament. Okay. Aside from... I played in an Urge Rage event. I definitely didn't wear a Pikachu shirt to it. Maybe this is the thing I should have realized, like, long ago. Mm hmm Well... For having not started collecting until the pandemic started, you have acquired Pikachu materials at an impressive pace. I stopped spending money on going to Magic tournaments and started gotcha. spending money on buying Pikachus. <laughs> All right. Well, there you go. Okay. So we'll, let's see if we can find some playable hands here. George Shabur looks content with six. Matthew Ruck content with six as well. Okay. A little bit control. It's a Narset Days Undoing. And George Shabor doesn't just play control. He plays the same style of control in both formats. Narset Days Undoing all the time. It's a pretty uh, good... Uh, wow. We kept all lands in Faithful Absence. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess it was six lands in Faithful Absence. He decided he, wanted, he didn't need a six land, so he'd just be content with five. So we'll see if Matthew's got a fast start here. Because if he does, uh, well, George might be in trouble. Yeah, we will see. I mean, based on how Matthew played the last two games, there wasn't a whole lot of, like, early aggression. It's mostly, like, early reaction into, like, mid-game aggression. So it will be interesting to see how that's going to end up playing into this. Mm -hmm. Well, I can see a Parkillion and a Witherbloom command in his head hand. Uh, here's Everfiend's Informant. Well, that's convenient. That's going to throw that Parmelian, Parkillion from hand into the graveyard. Parhelion 2, mm -hmm. let me specify, in case <laughs> anyone's confused with, you know, any other Parhelions. Now, is there a Parhelion one in Magic? I don't think so. I didn't think so either. No, there's not. There's also not like Sarpedian Empires, any other volumes besides 8 or whatever one there is. But, mm -hmm. you know, there is the whole Magic universe. Maybe there's a Parhelion in the lore, just not actually a card. I don't know. That's kind of what I'm under the impression of. All right. So your Wayfinder finds land. Rafine's informant across. And well, Matthew knows he's playing against a bunch of lands. George cycles one of them, the irrigated farmland. So, okay. It improves things a little bit. Not a basic land type in play yet, which doesn't matter for future glacial fortresses. I had to think about that for a second, whether fortress plural was fortresses or not. Fortress I. Yeah, I, I, well, I, <laughs> I thought about it. I, I decided against it, but I did think about it. All right, here's a sensor to take down Abzan Grease Fang number one. Or, I'm sorry, Grease Fang number one. Mm -hmm. The rat. Is it the god? It's not a god, right? It's just a, a rat. No, it's just a rat. It's a rat pilot, isn't it? Rat it's pilot. It's pilot, yes. Yeah. Wow. All right, four more damage Look comes across. Yeah, I'm all over it. 
what other pilots exist? There aren't very many, right? There, there were a bunch in that set. There were yeah. pilot tokens. Mm-hmm. To I do recall that vehicles. because there was an entire commander deck built around pilots. Oh, that I did not know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, George Shabar did, uh, to get to this point, take down the Is It Phoenix deck in the first part of top eight. Chat says, Zadek the Vampire destroyed the first Parmelian. Parhelion. I have no idea if that is true <laughs> or if that person just made that up. I have no clue. <laughs> That's like kind of the beautiful part about magic is they've actually made like so many characters that people sometimes just like say names. For the longest time, I didn't realize that Braids was a real character. I was just like, y'all are, yeah. I don't even know where Braids is in the lore, but Braids is in all kinds of cards. The, in what, all Braids, kinds of cards, but like, I didn't Braids? realize that that was like a character in the lore. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm not surprised, I guess. I mean, anything that's in a card, there are, I've only read one of them, but there are, I don't know how many magic books at this point. There's probably mm-hmm. more than 20. All of the, the only ones that I've read, I think I read because they were infamously bad. Okay. Our second Rafine's Rafine's informant is going to meet and absorb, which George does have the mana for. Something I tr- I played around with this with this control deck, not this exact version, but I found the field of ruins to be consistently annoying as far as being able to cast absorb, because it does require two yes. blue and a white. Colorless does not need to apply. So you you read the books that you were were known to be bad. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, like the, the Ixalan story where Vraska and Jace become a couple. Okay. Yeah. It, <laughs> that one actually, I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was horrible, but it was kind of funny. So Irrigated Pharma. So George Jabour actually has drawn enough spells that he's decided, I'm going to play this cycle land and put it into play instead of cycling it. And meanwhile, it was still with another copy of Field of Ruin in hand. Mm-hmm. So looking for a lot of colored mana, apparently. And we know there's a Narset in hand. Can't see what else. What? Life total? Getting pretty low. Another informant. And the last one got absorbed, yeah? hmm Okay. This definitely is a, probably a slower start than Matthew was maybe anticipating, considering that initial thought sees where we opened up and saw Fateful Absence into, into five all, lands. Yeah. Okay, George, do we, fingering his land there. Do we have memory deluge? Do we just have field of ruin activation to find another basic? We have something. Mm-hmm. Oh, we have Ottawara. Oh, okay. Very tentative there, as if he didn't even want to bounce it, but does end up bouncing the informant. If you're uh, getting the beat down, you sometimes got to return creatures that you don't want to return. Mm-hmm. Well, it's not so bad. If you can maintain a Narset in play, which George is going to choose not to do. I, I'm pretty sure I saw Narset in hand. Narset in hand, but potentially couldn't follow up with like a Zorb, or is there mm-hmm. only one card in hand? I think there's two. There's an absorb. Yeah, so there's not yeah. enough blue mana okay. to do everything. One, two, three, four. Yeah. No, there is. There's well there's No, there is. You know, George has the mana to play absorb. I not if we no, also cast doesn't. our set. Yeah, yeah. you're right. He does not he can't ruins. cast both because of double field of ruin. But uh using one of these field of ruins will fix that up and you've already burned through two grease fangs from Matthew, so feeling pretty good. Dang, what is with all the people with guru lands this weekend? What I can't believe given what land George fetched up, you're I talking know. about the land on the other side of the board. You're just screwing with me. <laughs> I did that time I was, yes. 
Because <laughs> every other time I've mentioned a land that isn't that white border one that you love so much. And you have them signed too, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So every time I don't mention them, you make a comment about how I don't mention them. So, you know, eventually I have the other to start one. Yeah. getting it. All right. All right. Well, uh, we'll continue to contest this. You know, tune into New Ridge coverage in future months as Becky and I go back <laughs> and forth on basic land choices. Narset in the play for George DeBoer. Looking for help. Yeah, Drew card that hopefully might be able to help is hopefully looking better. And ooh, speaking of help, Wandering Emperor could certainly yeah. be a help. Is there a land number four? No. I am guessing not. Portable Hull takes okay. care of one of these creatures. But I mean, hey, that's not too bad of a turn. A little unfortunate that as the control player, your hand is now known to your opponent. But well, also your opponent's hand is four times the size of yours. That's not good either. But you're ahead on the board for the moment. You're ahead on the board for a moment. One. And yeah, your Narset probably isn't dying this turn either. Like Seder Wayfinder attacks it. You still have an activation available on Narset. Mm -hmm. Two Grease Fangs in the graveyard. Yeah, just an attack coming across. Four one. Okay, Chariot in hand into play. That uh, portends some problems for Georgia Boar, but we'll see. I mean, planeswalkers are good, right? Georgia Boar does have a planeswalker in play. Well, not anymore. <laughs> Immediately gets sacked. You know, he's got Wandering Emperor. Mm -hmm. What would we, what would he like to see? I mean, this is a kind of rough situation because even if you grab Supreme Verdict, ooh, we're going to grab another Wandering Emperor. Uh, the Chariot still stays in play. Matthew's got quite a few cards in hand. Oh, did we, was our draw for turn another Narset? Oh. Wow. I mean, but uh, unfortunately for George, we are a little strapped for mana, so we can't do both in the same turn. We're one land away from being able to do both. By casting this Narset, you would be giving away that you just have two Wandering Emperors in hand. So instead, we're going to go for Field of Ruin, just try to strap white sources. No other basic. I guess the moment your oh. opponent plays a guru land, you have to assume that they're playing so few basics in their deck because the one that they have costs six hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, maybe <laughs> I don't know if you can make that assumption or not, but you but but we are in the top four. Players do have access to each other's deck lists, and if you're playing Field of Ruins, oh, that's uh, probably George, more fair. But okay, well, I did have a moment where I was like, I thought the Grease Fang deck played more basics than like one or two. Because I saw the guru and I was like, there's no way that you would like mismatch lands. And if the rest, like there's some swag to Matthew's deck before I get like people who come in and are like, you're being too mean. Like, but like the blo the Blooming Marshes aren't foil. Like it, you maybe don't have a ton of guru lands if your Blooming Marshes aren't foil. I don't know. I'm just maybe reading a little bit too far into it. May, may, perhaps, but that's okay. We're in, We're all enjoying it. Rotting Registrar comes down, crews up the chariot, everything that comes across. Wandering Emperor will pick off the... Probably the chariot. Well, that's what it initially looked like, but we'll see. Yeah, here comes Reggie. Yep. All right, and that comes with two life, I believe. So George will net lose three on the turn. He's still alive. This looked mm -hmm. pretty bad, and now it looks maybe playable. Yeah, has a Narset and another Wandering Emperor in hand, too. Mm -hmm. Hopefully is able to find a land. Did find a land, so we'll actually be able to cast both of these Planeswalkers, too. Uh, unfortunately for George, we do, on Matthew's side, know that the other creature, or the other card in hand is that Wandering Emperor. Supreme Verdict as the find actually is huge here now that that Essica's Chariot is gone. Yeah. Oh. Holy smokes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Matthew might have gone from a great spot in this game to a horrible spot in this game. Yeah. Uh, the, as the Chariot forgot to make a token that didn't end up mattering as they would have all died anyway to the verdict. And George at four with his fresh Wandering Emperor token post Wrath and Narsa in play. And maybe more importantly, Matthew does not have a white mana. Mm -mm. There is there is one. There's a few.
All right. Any more Field of Ruins for George? <laughs> Narset can't find one, but we'll see what it does dig up. Plenty of goodies here. Now that George is actually ahead on the board, which is kind of astonishing things given how things looked a few minutes ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, being able to narsa activate to like kind of dig for the things mm -hmm. that you're in fact looking for and then also on top of that being able to top deck another narset for when your other narset dies uh, right you gotta well, feel pretty good that's why you play them in every format exactly you know good. yeah <laughs> all right absorb found so the hand i believe is absorb and wandering emperor right that's that's not too bad that's a clock matthew's at 12 with Several cards in hand, at least one of which is a Parhelion 2. And okay, we've got a Rafine's Informant. We have a, I think I can't stay away. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Well, Rafine's Informant, not so good as it normally is with Narset in play. Definitely true, and I have to imagine that that's kind of where Matthew is stuck on in this turn as well. We've collected brutality in the deck. We could just try to eke one of those out. That is true. That would just for... win the game until the. <laughs> At the moment, it would except for that there's an yeah yeah except we know there's an absorb. absorb. Matthew knows there's an absorb, but you're right. the The fact that Collector Vitality can just do burn damage may end up being relevant. Matthew here probably, probably trying to decide what is the worst spell I can cast that will get countered. Mm -hmm. uh, Eska's Chariot does the job, I guess. If that's the way you want to look at it, Doors yeah. <laughs> And now we're out of uh, range, and it looks like we're just going to choose to amass a little bit of a board here for George. Yeah, why not? There's another Narset. So Matthew and all of us are going to find out what George's card is going to be. A counter would be probably ideal. That's well, an absorb. speak of That's the devil. Counter. Uh, all right. Do we have a two-turn clock? We do not. We almost do. Four damage across here. Matthew drops to eight. We are going to go ahead and make another token, it looks like. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, now that there's another absorbent hand, ugh, I mean, if Matthew can have a Parhelion threat that George has to counter and then another Parhelion threat next turn, he could still do this. And that is exactly what he has with at least that first. Mm -hmm. And say, wait, now that has flashback for five, which George, which Matthew will have next turn. So George does need to hit on this Narset or off the top of the deck. He has not got this one yet. Another Wandering Emperor would do it. Yeah, I was going to say, if we can uh, just get two extra damage, we can mm -hmm. do it as well. And Wandering Emperor can give us one damage of that. Has an Irrigated Farmland in hand. Faithful okay. Absence. Okay. A, a removal spell for a Grease Fang would also mm -hmm. work. as long as George remembers the Fate of Lovins is there and doesn't just, now that it's put in his land row and forget that it's there. But <laughs> he, did have his, he did have his revealed cards um, on the table before, so he probably, yeah. this is just the way he does it as a courtesy to Matthew. And here's an attack for seven. It's like, oh yeah, there's that Fate of Lovins. Now cycle. Interesting that, he, that he didn't cycle before activating Narset, but it all conceivably worked out just fine just because you'd know a little more information. But you can tell how confident George gets b based on how far the permanents get pushed into the middle of the screen. 
Yeah, these narcissists, I mean, each one acting as effectively sort of like a dig through time. Looking for eight cards to keep two with mm -hmm. some restrictions. Looking very powerful here. And now Matthew, well, if his win condition costs three, then there'd be options here. Potentially brutality followed by a grease fang. But a five mana flashback can't stay away is going to take all the mana he's got. And he can't play a thought season anyway, even if he had one. So George DeBoer is going to come back keep from keeping a a six card hand that included five lands and pick up game one in a closely contested battle. So uh, yeah, good for him. We'll see how this plays out. Let's bring up some deck lists. I mean, every time I've talked to control players, they're always telling me all you want to do is play land go for the mm -hmm. most part. Aside from when you're playing against a really aggressive deck, like lands are the name of the game. If you've got lands in play, the world is yours. And George showed us that that certainly can be the case, especially because we did get to see Matthew Ruck with this Abzan deck kind of especially in the last matchup as well, do a really good job of being reactive, but not do such a good job of being proactive in the early game. Mm -hmm. All right. You can see here the build of Grease Fang presented by Matthew Ruck. Uh, no copies of Sky Sovereign main deck and these collective brutalities not found in every list, but certainly finding some value in some of the matchups today. Cyborg wise, uh, there are some discard spells. Those are likely to come in. Uh, Abrupt Decay's Kill Narsets after they've activated once. I suppose that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but not, to my eye, the most exciting set of cards. Let's take a look at George DeBoer and see what Matthew's going to be dealing with. And that may impact how he wants to sideboard. Well, we're playing Magic and we're watching George mm -hmm. DeBoer. So regardless of format, we know it's Narset. Yeah, <laughs> certainly true. And we do see that those rest in pieces that are in the sideboard are likely going to be a big thing to come mm -hmm. into play here. I mean, do you even bother with Ether Gust if the only thing that you're really gusting is going to be something like an Essica's Chariot? Or do you just not worry about it and stick with uh, maybe something like Settle the Wreckage or just more Shark Typhoons? Uh... I, I'm, I'm with you that the Aether Gust does not seem great. Uh, Rest in Peace obviously does. And so I think it's likely Matthew will bring in the Abrupt Decays as they have a prime target that he does need to remove in that. Uh, Shark Typhoon. I mean, Shark Typhoon feels like a card. Like This isn't a matchup where there's important cards early game that George is trying to cycle for one and trade with. So I feel like Shark Typhoon's use is either that or is a late game kind of win condition in long grindy matchups. I don't feel like that's what this is. So maybe we'll see them, but I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, I can't say that I really would either, but when you only have like so many options, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe George Abor is comfortable enough with this deck and is just like, I don't know. If you're playing the same deck pretty much across two different formats, there's got to be some thought process that is just like, I don't know, I'm feeling pretty confident in my 60. I'm not really worrying about too much over here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a basically a reactive deck. as a nice set of stuff. Instant speed react, uh, removal, and not, not just instant speed removal for Grease Fang, but exile removal in March of Otherworldly Light is a nice feature to have when you're dealing with um, a threat that has uh, has a bad habit of returning to play from Don't Stay Away. Also, the one of Farewell, a great way to clean up a board, no matter how messy it gets in this matchup. Very, uh, yeah. very true. And a good way for you to handle your matchups at home is to always stay up to date with Nerd Rage Gaming. So hit that follow button. Whether Becky you're rooting Bell. for you white or Chris Vague. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta get you gotta get the segues in when you when you see them. No, that's good work. You and the horde of Pokemon. The, what 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 is this collection? Is a collection of horde, a gang, a platoon? Um, they're a rat colony, actually. Okay. I Pikachu is a mouse Pokemon, but uh, you know, I'll go ahead. I thought he was now. Granted, I know nothing about Pokemon. I thought he was like an electricity Pokemon. Yeah, he's an electric mouse. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I didn't know he was even a mouse. I thought he was just a Pikachu. It's literally the mouse Pokemon. All right. So that's why I also thought it was funny when we labeled Pika Fang, and that's mm -hmm. what 
Matthew no, yeah. is playing that it. Yeah, I thought it all fit. It all fit. No, They're all no. rodents. It was cute. Yeah, you know? no, yeah. I appreciate the Pikachu's in chat too. Thank you very much. Pikachu's <laughs> in chat. Oh boy, I need to retire. <laughs> Do mice exist in the Pokemon world? Um, no. Which also has confused many people for many a year. What? How yeah. you just said he was a mouse? How could mice yep. not exist if he is one? His label is, is that... mouse Pokemon, but mice do not exist in the Pokemon world. It, I'm be... not gonna. I'm not gonna try and make it make sense. I've accepted it. All right. <laughs> All right. I guess we'll just move on. We'll just leave it at that. I mean, if you show me a car and you're like, cars don't exist in this universe, what am I supposed to think? I'm showing you an Essica's chariot and saying yeah. cars don't exist in this universe. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get back to the table before this gets any more out of hand. Uh, we've got Matthew Ruck and George Jabour contesting a berth in the finals. Matthew Ruck, a game down here, having to deal with rest in peace. But discard spells work against rest in peace, unlike against Leyline. So. Not so bad as the black ley lines he faced last round. Also, there was four of those. There's only three of these. So, not all bad. And will our players keep sevens? Or will we see Matthew Ruck mulligan for the fifth time on coverage? Yeah, it has been a consistent theme, hasn't it? Although, I mean, George DeBoer untapped on turn one of last game with five land in hand. So, and nothing else. So, uh, we'll see. Both players looking for more. Both players giving these decks a very thorough shuffle here. I actually don't know if we're already on our way down below seven or not. Yeah, unsure as well. But, you know, if you've had to mulligan a bunch, it starts to just be like, a, maybe I'm the problem. And you start to shuffle a little more intensely. I know I personally do that. All right, while they're waiting, you can admire this beautiful tournament playmat, Nerve Rage Gaming Championship Series. Pretty nice color scheme, right? Becky, I believe you consulted on that. Good work. I Yeah, yep, for sure. Uh, I'm a big fan of yellow, red, and orange, as uh, that's been my hair color for quite some time. Work with Nerd Rage, Pikachus are that color. It, it all just comes up. Actually, those three none of those three colors are my favorite color. You know, you're setting a bad example, though, because I'm sure at some point they'll be like, all right, Joe, we'd like to keep you on as commentator, but you're going to have to dye your hair no rich colors <laughs> like Becky did. Because Becky did it, and she's setting, setting the trend. you got to follow along. Uh, I don't think they would have brought it up, but now that you've brought it up, yeah. you just really solidified yourself in a dark place. Okay. Drawing up our opening hands. We'll go into serious mode so that no one thinks we were actually speaking facts when talking about dyeing our hair in the future. <laughs> I'm dyeing my hair soon, so. It's already dyed. It is already dyed. That's true. But I can dye it again, Joe. I suppose. And we have Matthew Rock taking another mulligan. I mean, I would have put money on it at this point. Unfortunately. Yeah, it has been. Uh, what well, still, I mean. Maybe he kept every hand in the Swiss. And... Yeah. Uh, if everyone follows the Nerd Rage channel right now, I oh, bet God. we could convince Tannen to let me dye his hair. Hmm. That was a lot less. <laughs> Joe thought... was like shaking in his boots. I thought I was in trouble there, but I'm not. That's fine. I have no problem with that. How about this? We can, we can do better than that. If everyone, fo if everyone follows and subscribes, maybe we can convince Tannen to let me dye his hair. Oh, wait, that would be way more fun. <laughs> I mean, I'll have to read the directions every step of the way as we go, but, you know. That's okay. Yeah, it's okay. What, what do we care if Tannen's hair gets messed up? That's not a problem. It's it's also just hair. It grows back. Like, True. I don't know. Every time I dye my hair, I keep thinking to myself, I'm like, this is going to be the time that it's all going to fall out. I've been dyeing my hair since I was in fourth grade, and... Like nothing horrible has happened yet, and I have put it through the ringer. And every time I'm just like, This is gonna be it. Thank you so much, Mikey Hopkins, for the tier one subscription. There we go. We gotta start the hype train right now. Let's go. Come on, we're close to getting Joe and Tannen to dive. Tannen isn't even here. We didn't consult Tannen on this. He Tannen doesn't need to have a vote like, in this. Come on, oh gosh. Tannen is gonna be like, What did you sign me up for? <laughs> 
All right, Matthew Rock still mulling. Is he mulling to three? He might be. He's mulled to four, he's mulled to five twice, and he's mulled to six. So mm. we uh, have watched Matthew Rook mulligan a lot. Is playing a combo deck, so you'd kind of expect that a little bit. But yeah, certainly hasn't had a seven that he's playing. Uh, yeah, this deck there. is very redundant, though. You know, you would expect it to have some reward. Like, you know, you have mm -hmm. all this self mill stuff. You don't care if Grease Fang's in your opening hand. Oh, I suppose okay. We it, gotta but... we gotta call out some subscribers here. All right, we got Phyrexia's finest. Actually, that's a really sick name. I like that a lot. And Kenshin Stream, both of you, thank you much for starting off this hype train that we've got going. Thank you and welcome. All right, that's exciting stuff, especially when it coincides with Tannen's impending doom. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he's gonna show up next month. He's like, what it happened? How did, how, did, how did I agree to this? Like, oh, yeah, he's gonna. We're gonna be in a meeting, and we're gonna be like, and we're scheduling when we're dying tan and Grace's hair, and he's gonna be like, excuse me, what? Well, I'll just remember that was. Well, I was gonna say that was your idea, but I'm not sure that it actually was. No, yeah, you, 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 <laughs> it was actually somebody in yeah. chat. Oh, okay, excellent. All right, Grizzly Salvage to start. Looking at five cards, a vehicle goes to the bin. That's where you want them. Oh, we've put Graveyard awesome. Trespassers into the deck. Nice. I guess based on how that first game went, I probably would have added extra creatures too, especially ones that like get under the like three mana threshold to make sure that you're able to start kind of getting punchy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like doing this main phase, getting underneath sensor. Good place to be. George is actually have untapped lands this game and basics, so... Things will develop smoothly on both sides, looks like. The Azurcon, thank you also for the subscription. Appreciate it a lot. Also, I hope I said your name right. I stared at it for a really long time, but let me know if I said it wrong. All right, Sensor takes out Graveyard Trespasser. <sighs> Darn. Graveyard Paolo's Trespasser start barking also again. A, a, good, a good place to be if you're, I mean... Having creatures that don't require the graveyard, even though it is mm -hmm. aided by it, in case Rest in Peace does show up. Yeah. So your Wayfinder misses. Oh, yikers. Well, Matthew's got lands anyway, but yeah, I certainly would prefer to have the free ones. Horrible hole on, wow, on Sager Wayfinder. Just getting rid of, I mean, that's a pretty small creature to be targeted with removal there. Keeping the board clear is George DeBoer absorb on Eska's Chariot. All right. Looking for a follow-up here. One reason to keep the board clear is if you think you have a Teferi following up. Very true. We'll see if that's going to be the case, and we'll see Whoa, if okay. Matthew's going to be able to do anything about it. That that's, certainly hurts. That's better than the Teferi. George DeBoer cleans up both graveyards. Matthew Rock, do we have an answer? Another Eska's Chariot would be good? Maybe. With George with three mana open, able to play, consider all kinds of answers, though. <laughs> Pelucranos did come in. Oh, all right. Let's go Pelucranos. Also, let's go Stormy691 for uh, the subscription. I also subscribed to Tier 1. Thanks, Becky Bear. <laughs> Good Norm, job Norm, yourself. Norm literally said if we get 100 subs, Norm will dye his hair orange for the next event. Oh, so all right, we let's... have somebody actually willing to do it. Let's go. Oh. While we're considering that, well, I was going to ask for a Pelucranos to be brought up on the screen. Oh, we However, can, yeah, we can still it, do that. Pelucranos. Well, please. it's on. Too oh, late. never mind. <laughs> it got exiled by Wandering Emperor. So it was 6-6, six, six, ready to rumble there for a moment, but now it is gone. Matthew Ruck uh, facing on Wandering Emperor. Uh, okay, a chariot. That's excellent. Instant board presence. Able to attack through the samurai that the Wandering Emperor is likely to create. 
And that's kind of just the name of the game at this point. Like we've seen Matthew be pretty close to killing George, especially in that first game. And if you've just been able to keep being a little bit punchy, you can kind of get there. Thank you, DC Sports 8. That is Zach Dubin, correct? I'm not being crazy. Appreciate it. You mean Zach Dubin, our Nerve Rage Championship competitor? Yes. Yeah. <gasps> True. Congratulations. All right. George, we're going to roll up. Wandering Emperor. Play Hell Fountain. I believe that came in untapped. Cost him a couple life. So Matthew's got to be wary of what that might imply. Uh, seven mana available. So a cycled shark typhoon would actually be able to defeat the chariot in combat. I know we speculated that shark typhoon may not come in because it's primarily only to be good in late game grind scenarios, which is actually where we are right now. Yeah, I think that uh, that first game should have been more than enough of a like heads up that this ends up being grindier than you maybe would initially think that it might. Mm -hmm. Well, rest <laughs> in peace certainly helps that along. Matthew likely to have answers to the rest in peace. We just haven't seen it yet. All right, punching with the cat. Mm-hmm. Okay, fresh token created. And Ottawara will bounce. Okay, bounce the fresh token. Iganja will take out the chariot itself, keeping the board small. Uh, George, however, empty handed. Uh, last game, when his hand size was depleting, he went on a Narset string. That proved very useful in grabbing control of that game. So here, uh, once again, we've got Matthew, the one with more cards in hand. Grizzly Salvage. Looking, looking. All right, Becky. It does feel really bad to Grizzly Salvage into all of your cards going into exile, though. Yeah, well, okay, so you've got... <laughs> You got some lands. You've mm -hmm. got a can't stay away, which is a graveyard card, and you got a Rafine's informant. I mean, you didn't want to draw those other cards anyway. Actually, okay, I so that, that's fair. Sure. Yeah, okay, blooming march is a selection. That's. I wonder what George thinks about Matthew choosing another as his seventh land. Oh, you, you know have to think that there's yeah. a Parhelion in right. hand. <laughs> Okay, attack for three here. Yeah, Parhelion 2, hard cast, could be on the way. I mean, we George has done a great job of concealing his hand from us. I'm sure it's, like, great. It does make me anxious, because I want to know if there's a chance for oh. this Parhelion. You don't want to get Parhelion 2 censored, right? That would be a disaster. That would hurt. Oh, it's the farewell. Oh, well, uh, yeah, we don't want our things farewelled either, so farewell to farewell. I mean, an untapped land here is live for this Parhelion 2 to come in. Now, I don't know if it's going to do much. There's only one cat token. Yeah, we can't even crew the Parhelion immediately. I'd rather have it in play than in your hand. That's true. And then every creature becomes a scary top deck for George Jabour. If we can get to that point. George Jabour saying, did you really play a seventh land last turn? What are you planning <laughs> over there? Get out of here. Are you taking a page out of my book? That's not allowed. Oh, Grizzly Salvage. Looking for another land. Oh, two abrupt decays. Those are some of the best ways to get rid of the rest in peace. So that's disappointing for Matthew. Mm -hmm. I think that's two out of the total three in the 75. I am inclined to agree with you. All right. If you can take, if you're looking for a land, a one, one plus a land is better than just a land, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure, that's not? one more power toughness closer to. As long as you get, no. 
Statue oh. Rock is greedy, goes for the one one and misses on the land. Oh, All right, no. and you can see the players. But I like, I like that they're this. both invested yeah. in it. I love yeah. that George has finally figured out. Oh, you're this close to Parhelion. All right, a second three three samurai across. Choo choo. Okay. Matthew now needs to draw a land, an untapped land off the top, which is not that easy. A lot of his lands coming to play tapped at this point. All right, there you go, Temple Garden. Ooh, dropping down to. Pretty low light. There's Parhelion. So like, yes. yes, I have eight land at four. George, life. do you have the counter? No. <gasps> All right. But we're still one power off of being able to crew this Parhelion. Matthew is excited nonetheless. I love it. All right. All right. So we're looking at at least one chump block here, probably just one. And then hoping to draw a creature. What? A How did this happen? This is crazy. You know, I appreciate that Matthew has said, you know, I don't. My odds in this game, bad. I cast Parhelion 2. It's the little victories. That's a good way to live life. All right. Block. You know, if this Parhelion does get to crew once, that might George be enough. Blank, it might be. You would slam it if you had it, right? Come on. Come on. What'd you get? What some, it's something. It's a chariot. It's a chariot. It's a chariot. It's a chariot. George, you have a counter? If you have a counter, you but I mean, you're not sandbagging a counter here, are you? George hates fun. That's not true. I don't really feel that way, but it's I in there. say it. <laughs> George Shabor, how did this happen? Parhelion crude. March over the worldly light in hand. Do you have nine mana for your march? Do you have a hand to hard to discard? There's <laughs> six, seven. Oh what my goodness, March? Supreme Verdict pitched. Wow. Yeah, now Parhelion 2. Wow. Did you have that on your bingo card for today? I think not. Uh, nope. I, I wouldn't even put it on the bingo card to be checked off. All right. Parhelion is gone. Exiled along with everything else. No. Is Matthew dead on the board? It looks like yes, he is. There's only one untapped one. cat. He's at one. There are two creatures. What a ridiculous fashion for this game to end. George Tabor. There's just no way that any finals. game could be better than that one. So we should just end it now, honestly. Wow. The day's <laughs> over. <laughs> I mean, Matthew Ruck lost, but boy, was that a story. That's something I'm sure he'll remember for quite a while. And hopefully all of you watching did as well. That was... Uh... Okay, well... We'll try and recover this here. Georgia board does win this match. Are we going to, I assume we're heading straight to the finals unless somehow we have time or if the backup match is still running. Nope. Uh, it appears Will Kowalczyk defeated Jesse Robkin. Her run comes to an end in the top four as well. So the finals will be Will Kowalczyk versus George Shabur for the trophy of the energy pioneer 5k and the invite to dream hack Atlanta. Who's going to win. We'll be back in a few minutes and you can find out. All right, we're back. Becky Bell and I representing Nerd Rage Gaming with news that I know none of you are going to be happy with, but such as it is. Uh, George Jabour, not interested in the DreamHack invite, has conceded the finals to Will Kowalczyk. So we do not have a finals match to present to you. And I, we apologize for that. Nothing we can do. Um, the prize money is as stated. The invites are as stated. And the players are not required to play if they come to an arrangement which they have so the magic action has concluded for the day the winning deck will kowalczyk with red black mid-range in the the other finalist george jabour with blue white narset as he plays in all formats but we don't want to leave you completely empty handed here empty empty handed here uh will kowalczyk on the board as the winner of the event but the season two leaderboard is now complete Jesse Robkin takes the first slot, which was very likely to happen coming into the weekend. The second slot, which was very much in doubt, even up through the top eight today, Zach Dubin does come up on top and retake his spot. He came into the weekend with a slight lead, gave it up, 
has regained it. Zach Dubin locks up the second slot in the Rage Championship. He's here to talk with us. Let's bring him in. Hey, folks. Yeah, hey. It, it was really close. Uh, Scott, yeah. top eighting yesterday was the one of the few things that could happen that could result in me losing my lead. Uh, so coming into today, he had a three-point lead on me. And the way the points work out, we had to have a big enough gap between us mm -hmm. that I would earn enough points uh, while he's also earning points playing in the event. And I snuck into 16th place, and he topped 64. Right, and was, then Larry Fields yeah. was you're coming from lower in the in the standings, uh, top eights today. And if he wins the tournament, he gets the slot. So what was your feeling uh, when when you when you found that out? Like, is your is, does your heart beat a little faster, or or what's the, your mental state? So this day was wild. Uh, I started off one two. Yeah. Uh, Scott started off one two as well. Uh, we I ended up at four two, and Scott was three three. So looking at the standings going into the final round, uh, I had to win. He had to lose uh, to beat him on on uh, mm -hmm. break on points. He won. I won. And I thought that I went over to him, shook his hand, and said congratulations. All the meanwhile, Larry Fields is going off and top eighting, <laughs> uh, putting himself in a position where he, if he wins the event, he jumps both of us. Mm -hmm. uh, so the final standings come out. Uh, I am in 16th place. By 0. 0.6 on breakers, uh, which puts me at 68 points and Scott at 67. Wow. wow. And, it came right down. and then Larry Fields' run ends and unable to move through, <clears throat> move into the top eight. So you, so you lock it up. Yeah, right. So Jesse Robkin, I mean, crushed everyone else all season long. May as well end up there. So so you're in to the end of your championship. I'm in, yes. On the season two leaderboard. So we play a lot of formats here at No Rage Gaming. What, what format do you think? Uh, or do you feel like contributed the most to you or what deck to you achieving this? I mean, I'm sure it all contributed, but like what was, what's, what stood out for you in season two? Where did your points come from? What deck? What format? I, mean, I have to, it's just four color. Like, okay. I five, three in Lansing, I believe winning Chicago, uh, in those epic Mexican mm -hmm. amulet in the finals. Uh, and then the, the team event, the, uh, as well as the modern 5k in St. Louis, where I, accidentally drew myself out of top eight uh in the last round and then coming into this weekend having to have a consistent weekend a five three and a five two did that for me and locked up the, the seat for me so it's it's definitely on the back of modern for sure i mean you didn't want to you, you didn't want to make him feel bad by having any extra margin right so <laughs> it you was just... close we were we were like chat we messaged each other last night we're like good luck tomorrow like made the best 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 player win so mm -hmm. I was I was definitely stressed. I I couldn't watch the top eight match uh, that Larry played. I was like, just tell me what the result is at the end and <laughs> let let things play out. And they played out in my favor. And that's sometimes things have to break your way in magic tournaments. And I'm hoping that this streak continues on in the championship at the end of the year. Yeah. No, that's excellent. Now, congratulations to you, making it through. It's going to be a fairly elite field. Well, I mean, it's the best of the best in the energy series. So you're part of that now. I have to beat Jesse Robkin. Like, come on. It's going to be impossible. Yeah, well, I mean, it happens occasionally. She doesn't win every event. Or she's not in the finals of every event. She's in the top eight of every, almost every event. Come on. Uh, yeah, I know. It, it's, it's been pretty consistent. Not going to lie. But we got some special structures cooked up for you guys at the end of the year. I'm so excited so, for that. Yeah. Give, no. me, give me draft. Give me some draft. Oh, uh, well, well, we'll see. We'll see. We're not ready to reveal it yet. It still needs to be finished up but it is well under construction and i'm sure you all enjoy it zach dubin congratulations on your achievement we'll see you at the end of your championship thank you all right becky bell well we didn't have a finals that's too bad but i think we had a pretty good day right pretty good day no finals i'm a little sad that we're not getting to sit on these subscribers a little bit longer to see if we can get norm to dye his hair also shout out to professor oakley somebody that subscribed as we were going to break so didn't get to do that little bit of a shout out but thank you thank you to everyone else who subscribed today too thanks to everyone who followed today as well if you're still here and you're not following please do hit that follow button before you leave so that you're aware every time we're having a paper magic tournament and you can be here either in person playing or be watching and making sure that you're always in that chat supporting us telling us when we get things wrong when we don't see cards right or when we miss something that happens in the game we couldn't it really isn't possible without you certainly yeah absolutely 
Uh, yeah, good effort put in by all. Uh, let's go ahead and go over the season three schedule real quick. Um, if you, well, you should be following, but in case you aren't and you want to know where the events are, if you want to play, here is the season three schedule. October 22nd, 23rd, the week before Halloween in Newark, Ohio. We have a Pioneer Modern Legacy team trial, 10K, and then a Modern 5K on Sunday. Uh, two events in November, a 5th and 6th in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Another team, Pioneer Modern Legacy 10K and a Pioneer 5K. November 26th and 27th in Mundelein, Illinois, which is outside of Chicago. Our first 10K Pioneer event in the history of New Rage Gaming and a modern 5K on Sunday. And to end the year, December 10th, 10th and 11th, no longer at NebulaCon, which was canceled, but at the same site as NebulaCon. So if you already made plans, you're covered in Louisville, Kentucky. The showdown weekend, the modern 15K and a Pioneer 5K. Keep in mind, the winner of the of the modern 15K in December auto invites to the championship that Zach Dubin has just qualified for. So there is your season three schedule. This completes season two. Thanks for being with us, whether it was just for an hour today or for the whole year. We appreciate it. A lot goes into these shows. Uh, we hope you didn't even notice that our primary director, backup director, and primary producer were all on the shelf this weekend. We made it through with only a few errors, almost all of them happening in round eight yesterday, somehow. But uh, I do want to acknowledge the people that contributed to this show and put work into it. Becky Bell, Devin O'Donnell, Drake Sasser, Honorog Das, uh, Sam Lewis, the new judge coordinator and tournament runner, uh, Max Kond, who's on loan to the San Francisco 49ers this year, but did find time to update the leaderboard for us this morning, so we had accurate totals. Uh, Corey Ann Thoreau, who's the table spotter, uh, all the judges involved, the head judge, the staff, everyone puts in a lot of work at these events, and for... Norman Cohn, owner and today director of Nerve Rage Gaming, and myself, Jill, said thanks for being with us. We'll see you next season.